The first time I remember was as a wet high child in Lusaka. One of the many Ethel uncles, men who were related to us only because we came from the same country and through the struggle, was no, was a known racist, except the word wasn't used in the movement. They prepared to say he loved dresses. Which of course was figurative speech because not all human beings with the diamonds wore dresses. But it didn't stop them from laughing for them. This man, our parents wondered, if he come when we're not here, don't open the gates. The onus was on us then to listen and not open and not have anything done to us. We who were children. No one in that movement was there so that maybe I reckon a pedophile and a rapist will not divide and conquer the revolution. That maybe Sekwo being in prison would instead strengthen the voice of their sister comrades, knowing that they didn't need to claim that they were married or had a boyfriend to stop unwanted advances. That this too would protect the vulnerable youngsters. Yet so it was, and Uncle Pio, the one of my uncles that the night came to call us, didn't relent. Last we heard, when we returned from exile, he had raised his own sister's daughter as she was his child, his own niece. And yet I know, for a fact, if I had opened the gates at the age of five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten, or any age before I was 18 and sexually active, and that man had raised me, they would have said, but they told you not to open the gates for me. Why did you open the gates for him? Do you only listen? And then we moved to Zimbabwe. There were problems here too. The men who would vote at me and my friends Kumoto and Tinashe as they walked from school. Why would any grown men blend their car horns at children's school uniforms? And yet they did. And the women who sat selling vegetables on the roadside chastised us. You are laughing too loudly, too freely. You are inviting the men. Our homes were a walking distance from Lexington and later from Girls High. But if they had not been, and we are tired of walking, and got in one of those cars, and something happened to us. We are thirsty. It would have clearly been our fault, according to these women. Because how dare we laugh so loudly and be so free? How dare we imagine that men grown enough to be our fathers may actually just be feeling sorry for us in the blazing sun and wanted to give us a ride so we're closer to home. 